There are many tutorials on water simulation out there, but in this video, I'm going to show you the most efficient way to make a water splash simulation for your objects inside of Blender without wasting any second of your time. Let's get started. So we are going to start by preparing the scene setup. This setup must contain your main object with all of the details and so on, in addition to a basic model of your main object. For example, in this case, I have this shoe model and I modeled this kind of shell object for the shoe model too. For modeling this object, I just added a cube and shaped it by adding loop cuts, moving vertices, and I just got it done in that way. And for the feasible chocolate bar you saw in the thumbnail, I did the same thing. I just added the cube and fixed its scale and position to make a basic object for that too. You can do the same process with any object you have. I usually do this to speed up my work and lessen the simulation time. After we got our main object in addition to a basic model of that, we can parent them together in order to move and place them easier. I prefer parent everything with the basic object, so I select that, then I press A to select everything else. And now while this is my active object, as you can see its color is different, I press Ctrl P and choose Object Keep Transform. Now as you can see when I move, rotate and scale this object, everything else is transforming with it too. So right now I'm just done with my product object. Also another part of our setup is just a plane which is going to be the source flow of our liquid. Just press shift A to add a plane, then move it by pressing G and rotate it by pressing R. I prefer changing the scale in the edit mode so that I don't have to apply the scale in the object mode every time I make a change. In the edit mode press A to select everything and press S to scale. From here you can press X, Y or Z in order to scale your objects in those axes. Also you can press those keys twice if you want to scale the plane according to its normal directions. After you fix the plane's position like so, we are done with the scene setup. Now it's time to do the simulation. To add a simulation setup, select the plane, go to object menu, go over the quick effects section and choose quick liquid. This gives you a far faster way than adding a cube to make a domain out of it and doing everything manually. Now while we have the domain selected, we can easily move it to where we want by pressing G and scale it by pressing S. Scale it in the proper way like this so we make sure that it covers all the space we want the simulation to have. Happen. Basically, this area determines the simulation's area. At the end, make sure you apply the scale of the domain by pressing Ctrl A. Now select your main object, then go to physics menu and between all of these different physics, choose the fluid. After that, just set the type to a vector. We'll come back to this menu if we encounter intersecting problems in our simulation later, but for now, just leave it like this. After all, just select the plane and the journey begins in the physics setting. The first thing we need to do here is enabling the is planar option. After that, when we hold shift and press the left arrow, it moves us to the first frame. And from here, we can play the animation by pressing a space and as you can see something is happening here basically these are the fluid particles that we need to animate them and then convert them to mesh in the future so the first step is giving these particles a direction which in this case they should go towards the positive x-axis so while selecting the plane in the physics setting enable the initial velocity option and increase the initial x amount now when I play the animation again you can see the difference increase or decrease these values to adjust it as you wish for example in this case I increase the initial z value to make these particles to go upwards a little bit too. The rest I've done was just experimenting different things. I entered different numbers for initial axis amount, I changed the scale and the location of the plane to see how it acts in different places, and I also rotated the main object, basically the shoe, because I thought that the way it looks is boring and some variation can make it more attractive for the final render. The rest was just changing and checking the animation to find the best results. I finally got happy with this animation right here. I like this setup because of the way that the splash simulation looks. As you can see it almost covers the whole shoe and it has some variation and randomness which makes it more realistic and good looking. But this is not the final change and we probably need to change it more after we convert these particles into mesh. So I just leave it like this for now and it will be continued later. Now it is the time to go through the main setting which is basically the domain setting. Just select the domain and come here to its physics setting. You can see a lot of values which all of them are interesting although not necessary to deal with. To be honest, we only need a few of them to work with and get the job done in a decent way. And trust me, each of us is going to need to play with some of them to find their satisfying result. For example, I changed some numbers when I wanted to make this chocolate-like simulation comparing to this water splash simulation. The resolutions are different, the CFL numbers are different and so on. So for now, I'm going to leave the resolution at 32. I changed the CFL number to 2 
I enter 1.1 for the particle radius in the liquid section, 0.3 for the randomness, and then I just increase the resolution up to 100 and I play the animation to see a preview. If it was good, I just come here to enable the mesh option. I increase the upper factor to 5 and I also enter a number like 1.9 for the particle radius. After that, I increase the smoothing positive a little bit to a number like 3 or 4 or maybe 5. Now it is the time to see what I've done. I go over the cache section and I enter the end frame to a number like 20 because I don't want to render a lot of frames. But if you want to make an animation out of a simulation, you need to increase this number to a number like 100. 150 or a higher number it all depends on the length of your animation and it's related to that i change the cache type to all so that i can bake everything at once and you can also choose a folder for the baking process of your simulation after all just hit bake all and wait until it's done after the baking process got done and if you were not happy with it click on the free all button change the setting and bake everything over and over again until you find the best look for your splash you can hover over all of these values to see a quick guide on how each of them works it's quite challenging and requiring some time to find the best look for your simulation and my best suggestion is just keep trying different values for different options to finally find what you want in this case i tested everything and worked with them for 30 minutes until i found my satisfying results i tried and changed different values i also moved and changed the scale of the liquid source basically the plane a lot and i baked the simulation over and over until i eventually got happy with this setting take a quick look at it so we can move on to the final parts when you got happy with the result you have two options you either want to render it as an animation so you don't have to touch it at all just disable this cover object from your renders in the outliner and turn on your main product to render your scene and if you don't want an animation but you only want a single frame it becomes even easier just put up some lights in your scene set up a camera go to your favorite frame and render the image Considering that this simulation setting has already added the water material to your mesh, you don't need to do anything except that you want to change the water material to something else, for example milk, chocolate, etc. You can just select the mesh, go to the shading workspace and change the material from there. Just press shift A and add the principal BSCF node and use it as your main material and maybe change its color, change its roughness. Just play with it, play with it to find the result you want, maybe for your chocolate splash or maybe you want to create a material that looks like milk etc. For rendering things like this project, I usually add an HDRI image which are usually downloaded from the Polyhaven website in order to have realistic reflections and make it look better but you can also add lights manually as I did for the feasibles render. Before I forget, the final project file of this video containing this simulation setup is available on my Patreon. Check that out if you want to support the channel and benefit from it. That was all about how you can make splash simulations for your products in Blender. I hope you learned something useful from this video and if so, please like it and leave your feedbacks in the comments. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I have big plans for this channel and the coming videos. My upcoming videos will be things like a tutorial on creating this Nike shoe inside of Blender, maybe making a commercial for new Mr. Beast Thistables and other fire videos. With that being said, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Wish you the best. Stay tuned for the next. Goodbye.